We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we are, are in bondage to sin, sin and, cannot and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, deed by, by what, what we have done and by, by what we have left undone. undone. We, we have, have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have not loved our neighbor, our neighbor as ourselves. ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Almighty, Almighty God, God, you wonderfully, wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Hear this, a reading from Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. A reading from Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir, through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The 
the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow at the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew up and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, O Christ. Christ. Good morning. Anna and Simeon were looking for consolation or comfort. And so on this, the first Sunday of Christmas, I invite you to hear a story. It was Christmas Eve, and although it was still afternoon, lights had begun to appear in the shops and the houses of the little Russian village, for the short winter day was nearly over. Excited children scurried indoors, and now only muffled sounds of chatter and laughter escaped from the closed shutters. Old Papa Panoff, the village shoemaker, stepped outside his shop to take one last look around. The sounds of happiness, the bright lights, and the faint but delicious smells of Christmas cooking reminded him of past Christmases when his wife had still been alive and his own little children were home. Now they had gone, his usually cheerful face with the little laughter wrinkles behind the round steel spectacles looked sad now. But he went back indoors with a firm step, put up the shutters and set up a pot of coffee to heat on the charcoal stove. Then, with a sigh, he settled in his big armchair. Papa Panoff did not often read, but tonight he was pulled down the big old family Bible, and slowly tracing the lines with one forefinger, he read again the Christmas story. He read how Mary and Joseph, tired by their journey to Bethlehem, found no room at the inn. 
so that Mary's little baby was born in the cow shed. Oh dear, oh dear, exclaimed Papa Panoff, if only they had come here. I would have given them my bed, and I could have offered the ba covered the baby with my patchwork quilt. He read on about the wise men who had come to see the baby, bringing him splendid gifts. Papa Panoff's face fell. I have no gift that I could give him, he thought. Then his face brightened. He put down the Bible, got up and stretched his long arms up to the shelf in his little room. He took down a small, dusty box and opened it. Inside was a perfect pair of tiny leather shoes. Papa Panoff smiled with satisfaction. Yes, these were as good as he had remembered, the best shoes he had ever made. I should give him those, he decided, and as he gently put them away and sat down again. He was feeling tired now, and the more he read, the sleepier he became. The print began to dance before his eyes, so that as he closed them, just for a minute, in no time at all, Papa Panoff was fast asleep. And as he slept, he dreamed. He dreamed that someone was in his room, and he knew at once, as one does in dreams, who the person was. It was Jesus. You have been wishing that you could see me, Papa Panoff, he said kindly. Then look for me tomorrow. It will be Christmas Day, and I will visit you. But look carefully, for I shall not tell you who I am. When at last Papa Panoff awoke, the bells were ringing out, and a thin light was filtering through the shutters. Bless my soul, said Papa Panoff, it's Christmas Day. He stood up and stretched himself, for he was rather stiff. Then his face filled with happiness as he remembered his dream. This would be a very special Christmas after all, for Jesus was coming to visit. How would he look? Would he be a little baby as that first Christmas? Would he be a grown man, a carpenter, or the great king that he is? He must watch carefully the whole day so that he recognized him however he came. Papa Panoff put on a special pot of coffee for his Christmas breakfast, took down the shutters, and looked out the window. The street was deserted. No one was stirring. No one except the road sweeper. He looked miserable and dirty, and, well, he, he might look that way for whoever wanted to work on Christmas Day. And in that cold, the bitter freezing mist of such a morning. So Papa Panoff opened the shop door, letting a thin stream of cold air in. Come in, he shouted across the street cheerily. Come in and have some hot coffee. Keep out of this cold. The sweeper looked up, scarcely able to believe his ears. He was only too glad to put down his broom and come into the warmth. His old clothes steamed gently in the heat of the stove, and he clasped both red hands around the comforting mug as he drank. Papa Panoff watched him with satisfaction, but every now and then his eyes strayed to the window. It would never do to miss his special visitor. Expecting someone? the sweeper asked. So Papa Panoff told him about his dream. Well, I hope he comes, the sweeper said. You've given me a bit of Christmas cheer that I never expected to have. I'd say you deserve to have your dream come true. And he actually smiled. When he had gone, Papa Panoff put on a cabbage soup for his dinner, then went to the door again, scanning the street. He saw no one. But he was mistaken. Someone was coming. It was a girl walking slowly and quietly, hugging the walls of shops and houses, and it was a while before he noticed her. She looked tired, and she was carrying something. As she drew nearer, he could see that it was a baby wrapped in a thin shawl. 
There was sadness in her face and the pinched little face of the baby too. Papa Panoff's heart went out to them. Won't you come in, he said, calling outside to going, stepping outside to meet them. You both need a warm place by the fire. The young mother let him shepherd her indoors and to the comfort of the armchair. And she gave a big sigh of relief. I'll warm some milk for the baby, Papa Panoff said. I've got children, I've had children of my own, and I can feed her for you. He took the milk from the stove and carefully fed the baby, warming her tiny feet by the stove at the same time. She needs shoes, the cobbler said. But the girl replied, I cannot afford shoes. I've got no husband to bring home money, and I'm on my way to the next village. A sudden thought flashed through Pan Papa Panoff's mind. He remembered those little shoes that he had looked at last night. But he was keeping those for Jesus. He looked again at those cold little feet and made up his mind. Try these on, he said, handing the baby and the shoes handing the baby the shoes. And the mother tried them on, and the beautiful little shoes were a perfect fit. The girl smiled happily, and the baby gurgled with pleasure. You have been so kind to us, the girl said, when she got up with her baby to go. May all your Christmas wishes come true. But Papa Panoff was beginning to wonder if his very special Christmas wish would come true. Perhaps he had missed his visitor. He looked anxiously up and down the street. There were plenty of people about, but they were all faces that he knew. They were neighbors going to call on their families, and they smiled and wished him Happy Christmas. Or they were beggars, and Papa Panoff hurried inside to fetch them hot soup and a hunk of bread, hurrying out again in case he missed the important stranger. All too soon, the winter dusk fell. When Papa Panoff next went to the door and strained his eyes, he could no longer make out the passers-by. Most were home and inside, by now anyway. He walked slowly back into his room at last, put up the shutters, and sat down wearily in his armchair. So it had been a dream after all. Jesus had not come. Then, all at once, he knew that he was no longer alone in the room. This was not a dream. He was wide awake. At first, he seemed to see before his eyes the long stream of people who had come to him that day. He saw again the old ro road sweeper, the young mother and her baby, and the beggars that he had fed. As they passed, each whispered, didn't you see me, Papa Panoff? Who are you? He called out, bewildered. Then another voice answered him. It was the voice from his dream, the voice of Jesus. I was hungry and you fed me, he said. I was naked and you clothed me. I was cold and you warmed me. I came to you today in every one of those you helped and welcomed. Then all was quiet and still, only the sound of the big clock ticking. A great peace and happiness seemed to fill the room, overflowing Papa Panoff's heart until he wanted to burst out singing and laughing and dancing with joy. So he did come after all, was all that he said. Dear friends in Christ, even as this season of Advent is over and we are in the midst of Christmas, our lives are full of expectant waiting. Like Papa Panoff, we are called to look for Christ. With Anna and Simeon and Papa Panoff, how do we look for Christ every day and in the faces of strangers? and people who we know. How do we live in the joy that Christ is here among us 
and align our lives with God's kingdom story. So we do live in the joy that Christ is here among us and in the seemingly small but intricately important days of our lives. And we look to Christ in each other. And then, like all of the people we heard today in story, Papa Panoff, Simeon, Anna, Mary, Joseph, Jesus, we can, eat, we can be surprised even as we see and realize that Christ is indeed among us. So how does Christ look? Watch carefully. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Night and day, all creation praises you, God. 
Strengthen your church across nations and denominations and traditions of all kinds. Fill us with wisdom. Unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that wait for longer days of awakening and growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The nations are held by your hand, O God. Let righteousness and praise spring forth and inspire leaders to serve with compassion. Send your spirit upon all civil leaders as they make complex decisions. Let all of their decisions be for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send the spirit of your son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. Reveal your power to heal and save. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. Let us depart in peace, O God, according to your word. For all your saints, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses, of every time and place. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all of our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.